Table saw injuries are a serious matter and many if not most can be prevented by following safety rules and using table saws with built-in safety features such as blade guards, splitters and anti-kickback pawls, riving knives which I'm a huge fan for an advocate, um, large safety switches, push sticks, and of course electric brakes or flesh sensing type technology with, with brakes on them. So we recently took the saw stop job site table saw, it's their JSS model, to our job site. They've been famous, SawStop is famous for their flesh sensing technology. It's a blade breaking technology and it stops the blade within five one thousandths of a second after contact with skin. So there's been a lot of hoopla surrounding the saw and what often gets lost in translation is that with or without the flesh, flesh sensing brake technology, say that three times fast, this saw offers premium features and performance. So how does the whole saw stop work? Well, the saw blade carries a small electrical signal, current I guess, that monitors and detects skin contact with the blade. The signal in the blade changes uh, because human, the human body is conductive. And once the signal changes, the saw activates a braking system, which is a spring-loaded aluminum brake that basically embeds right into the blade and it stops it within five one thousandths of a second. The brake and the blade collision momentum basically drive that blade right down below the tabletop, removing the blade from view and further injury, as well as simultaneously it turns the saw off, the motor off. Uh, after, after activation, the saw needs to be reset. Blade's got to be replaced um, as, as well as the saw stop brake cartridge. The reset process, it takes about five minutes. I've done it twice now, three times now. Um, let's talk about the saw capacity. It's a 1.5 horsepower motor 10 inch blade. The saw itself weighs 79 pounds and 108 pounds when attached to the stand. The motor spins on a poly V static dissipative belt and the cord, the power cord is nine, uh, nine feet six inches long. It, it bevels uh, from zero to 46 degrees. Uh, it will give you a 90 degree three and one eighth inch cut and at 45 it'll give you a two and an eighth inch cut. Uh, it will rip 25 and a half inches to the right of the blade when extended and nine and three quarters to the left of the blade. It is also capable to handle an 8 inch dado blade up to 3 13 16 inches wide. Um, the, blade, the dado blade will need an additional a new accessory cartridge to work. It will not work without it. It is taller, wider and sold separately obviously. Uh, saw will not run because there's just too much space. It has to fill in that space. Uh, probably my favorite feature on this saw is the blade height knob and it requires basically one turn to fully raise or fully lower the blade. It is a really sweet thing. Um, changing the bevel is just as simple. It's just a quick tilt squeeze handle. You squeeze with your fingers and you can just move. It's right behind the hand wheel and you can just move the bevel to whatever you want. And then there is a micro adjust knob that basically um, adjusts the bevel within plus or minus a couple of degrees. Um, the uh, power control switch on this saw I found can be a little bit confusing at first glance. So you gotta kind of read through the instructions a little bit. There is a power switch that basically controls the electronics of the saw. It turns on, goes through diagnostics, and then there's a paddle switch that turns the blade on or off. Uh, in between the switches is a uh, green and a red LED light that has 12 different conditions and there are quick reference labels. One is attached to the side of the saw and additionally, there is a guide uh, with your instructions in the top accessory drawer of the saw in case, uh, with the user's guide in case you need it. But there are 12 different codes, so you need to know what those codes are. Um, the user guide I found that they, they have on the saw is not just cheap paper, it's actually water resistant and really quality. Uh, let's talk about conductive materials because that's what's going to cause the saw to activate. Um, Conductive materials, we know what they are. They're green, wet wood, pressure treated wood. Pressure treated wood typically contains a copper solution or um, some sort of copper in it. Aluminum, other metals, uh, foil like foil insulation and any materials with carbon and even some laminates because some of them have copper flakes in them now. But you can set the saw in a bypass mode to cut conductive materials or to test for conductivity of the material you're suspicious of. 
So in the bypass mode, there is no saw break, there's no protection. But you basically, you set the saw up so that you can test it, so, or, or cut the material. You switch the saw um, on and you wait for the red light to turn off. And once that happens, you press in and hold the bypass switch. While pressing the bypass button, you pull out the red on-off paddle to spin the blade, basically get the blade started. And you keep pressing until the red light flashes once and then you can release. The green light will then flash and that will indicate that you are in bypass mode. To deactivate the bypass mode, all you do is, is, is cycle the uh, push on and off switch and it will default back. There is also a plastic key that allows you to disable the bypass mode um, in there as well. So look, if you suspect material that you want to cut may activate the cartridge, you don't want to screw up your blade and cartridge, then you can utilize the bypass mode to test the conductivity of the material. So what you do is you basically you place the saw in bypass mode and you make a cut or two. After making the cut, after you cut that material, if the red light is flashing fast, then that material is too wet or too green to cut. And if that happens, you will need to keep the saw in bypass mode. You're gonna have to do that or you will activate the cartridge. Uh, and remember, once you cycle the saw switch, power switch, paddle, on and off, you're gonna default back to protection. So you have to do the bypass mode every single time. Uh, let's talk about the fence. There is a T-style fence that self-squares. It locks into position. Um, saw stop calls an ergo, ergo lock rocker switch lever on top. It's on top of the switch. Basically locks and unlocks the fence. I found this really easy to use, simple to use. Uh, there is also a red knob on top of the fence that extends a support shelf to support material when you're on the extended, when the fence is retracted and the table wing is, is, is uh, retracted out. Um, the saw stop job side saw has a very cleverly designed table extension, which is obviously used for ripping um, wider boards. There's just a flip up lever under the tabletop that lets the table uh, ride on some rails and it slides out, giving you a 25 and a half inch rip capacity. Um, there is an indicator over the ruler line. The upper scale on the ruler line is used when the table is retracted and the lower scale is used when the table is extended. So it gives you two scales. I like that. A lever quickly allows you to switch between the micro guard and the 2.3 millimeter thick riving knife. Uh, never been fans of plastic blade guards, uh, but the saw stop guard's a little bit different. It has three independent wings on each side of it. These wings make it easier to lift partial sections and measure to the blade. Uh, I really liked, um, and it really shined, I should say, when we were using it on a bevel cut on some plywood. We were cutting it. It really, it was nice. The blade guard spreader and riving knife are designed, obviously, to be used with 10-inch blades um, or with blades with a curve between 2.35 millimeters and 3 0.5 millimeters and a blade body of 1.8 millimeter and 2.1 millimeters. The zero clearance insert comes with the saw and it's also tool free and it easily slides, it slides up and out for removal and it secures in place with a uh, spring loaded finger pull mechanism which I really thought was great. Um, located under the full extension slide is a storage container. Innovative, space saving, we liked it. It's an accessory drawer. It basically holds a micro guard, the riving knife, the miter gauge, uh, the ec an extra sensor, and a user guard guide, and some wrenches. Um, there is a holster for the fence that locks in and stores it, as well as a power cord wrapped just under the table on the right-hand side. Push stick location was meh. Um, it clamps into a post and clamp, and we found that the push stick was awkward and ended up leaving it out during cutting operations. I think a preferred method would be to put it into the fence somehow, kind of like what DeWalt does. I like that. There is a two and a half inch outside and a two and a half, two and a quarter inch inside diameter um, uh, dust port. And I want to say that um, it, it, it worked really well when connected to a, a vacuum. There is also a shroud underneath the table around the blade that basically covers about 75% of it, and that helps direct the sawdust out. Um, when it's not connected to the uh, to a vac, a dust vac, it does build up because there is a grid. There's a grid underneath the base of the saw. And what we found is uh, it built up and we had to clean it out with a vacuum. And we were worried that maybe the um, extra heat would potentially negatively impact electronics of the saw. So not really sure about that. 
There is an optional dust collection guard. It's model number JSS-DCG, and that you can you can purchase for the saw. The beauty of the shroud, the shroud is, um, it offers a, a top side one and a half inch dust port, outside diameter, and the guard design basically takes the turbulence of the blade and directs it right through to the to the port. Uh, the only problem with this is you're going to need two vacuums or you're going to need to rig up some sort of a splitter to run the bigger hose down low and the little hose up up top. Uh, as far as changing the blades on the saw, it's the same as anything else. It's a nut and washer. Um, pretty easy to do, pretty straightforward. Comes with, the, uh, with two wrenches that allow you to do that on the back with a quick release knob, which is nice. Um, if you activate this saw, you can you can reset it pretty quickly, probably within five minutes. And basically uh, what you have to do is you have to rotate fully counterclockwise and then clockwise the blade up and down to reset it. And then you have to remove the blade and use the tools that they provide you to basically work off the blade and work off the cartridge to get it off. You kind of have to work it as you go, little prying action. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, like I said, it will accept the dado blade, eight inch dado blade only. Um, in order to achieve the saw stop safety protection, you need to also use the dado cartridge. It won't work without it because there's a two inch gap. The, um, they're also, uh, saw stop also offers a dado insert, which is an accessory. Let's now talk about the stand. The saw mounts on a really nice pedal activated lock release stand. Uh, easy to open, easy to fold, uh, one pedal press. It's kind of a tubular metal design. Stores nicely vertical for storage uh, or horizontal. In transport mode, it works like a dolly. There's eight inch wheels that work well on rough terrain and residential stairs and stuff. Um, I find that those eight inch wheels, regardless of the saw stop or any other tool, kind of are a sweet spot. It's a good size for wheels. Um, overall, the big draw for me in purchasing this type of a, a saw is, is the safety system. You know, we used it for two or three months on a large remodel and uh, we ripped framing, plywood, trim, oak flooring, PVC. The entire crew used it uh, without activating the safety system or having any, um, any trips, accidental trips. It's a premium saw with premium features. And uh, we, found the, we found the fence was easy to adjust, excellent parallelism with the blade. We, had, um, we did have some minor fence alignment issues at first, um, but after closer inspection, we realized that we just needed to be careful when cutting sheet goods. Sometimes you can knock, because it's a T-style locking self-alignment, you can knock it with big sheet stock. You gotta be careful with that. Um, the blade elevation hand wheel is the best and fastest I've ever seen, and probably my favorite feature after the safety system. Um, saw stop improvements. Premium saw, there's really not to dig the saw on. Uh, I did get annoyed with the sawdust buildup under the grid. Um, located under the base of the saw. You know, we were on a, a, a gut remodel. We didn't use dust extraction. We were just letting the sawdust blow. Um, additionally, for the cost of the saw, I'd like to see them give you a second cartridge too, so users can continue to use the saw if they experience an activation, an accidental uh, activation due to a conductive material. Um, that bypass tab has that little plastic, yellow plastic key. We thought that was cheap and, and could easily be lost. We'd like to see a better lock key design. Maybe they can improve that. Um, you know, brought it back to the shop after we used it. We wanted to curious to see if things would activate it, like rain and stuff like that. So what we did here in the shop is we misted the blade. We soaked some wood in a five gallon bucket to 30% moisture and it did not trip the blade. But you know, guys, case by case basis, depending on wood species and wood grain and saturation and all that stuff. Um, let me see, what else do we do? Uh, nail embedded wood, like finished nails and staples did not set off the saw, activate the saw. Pressure treated wood did and did not set the saw off. Um, our pressure treated wood was 25% wet and rated for ground contact. And one board did and one board didn't. There, there is copper in some of these boards and you know it should set it off. Um, we put, uh, we wet a board and put it in the freezer to see if, if glazed ice would activate the saw and it did not. So, uh, some of these things do and some of these things don't and there are variables, right? Um, look, whether you're a woodworker, hobbyist or business contractor, the money that you spend on this saw for the safety system is worth its weight in gold. It's going to sell for $1,300, $1,399 I think on Amazon. The extra brake cartridges are $69 and the dado cartridge that I mentioned is $89, 20 bucks more. 
Overall impression, pure innovation with premium features, functionality, and compact portability. As a remodeling contractor, guys, uh, who uses a saw basically from frame to finish, this allows me and my company to achieve precision, quality, but most importantly, safety. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing to the channel. We need your support. And of course, I want to hear your comments. Please leave some comments below. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.